Uh, Donald Trump has been blamed for the increasing tensions with his rhetoric and tweets. I mean, is this a fair criticism? I think it is a fair criticism. I think it is a fair criticism, um, simply because uh, we didn't see this sort of uh, aggressiveness by former presidents. Now, Obama, Obama obviously launched a few wars in his time, Libya and, and Syria and, uh, and some other ones. He, 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 he uh, didn't, you know, he had aggressive rhetoric as well. Um, it's just we've never really seen aggressive rhetoric in Asia. So all of a sudden it shifts the dynamics as to what people concentrate on. So, you know, uh, Bush uh, invading Iraq, there, was there aggressive rhetoric between the uh, United States and Iraq? Yes, definitely there was, you know, the WMDs and anthrax and all sorts of things. So I actually think this is a fair criticism, and I think it's part of Trump's game to, to, to play it tough. Um, and you've seen, uh, you know, fire and fury, that quote, or, you know, goes on the um, uh, at the UN, he calls him rocket man. So I think this is a fair, uh, a fair, uh, uh, you know, this is a fair criticism. Absolutely. Um, I think it's part of his plan. It's not part of Madison Tillerson's plan. Um, you know, Madison Tillerson uh, uh, are very much on the on the on the train of. Uh, you know, okay, we'll end strategic, uh, we'll land, you know, strategic uh, patience, but we're going to hold Pyongyang to account. You know, we're going to uh, we're going to push forward uh, and and get rid of these nuclear ballistic missiles somehow. But Trump is definitely uh, definitely pushing on a on a on a harder note. He's a bit of a real estate man, and uh, and he's trying to get his way. So I think it actually is a fair criticism. Um, but at the same time, on the counter of that, we have seen a few more rocket launches than, than normal coming out of North Korea. And, and, and North Korea has been specifically provocative because they're doing it on dates like, uh, you know, the American Independence Day celebrations and things like that. So there's, there's toying on both sides. Um, there's toying on both sides. But, um, yes, I, would think, I think your initial question, yes. Uh, but, but like we said before, this situation has been festering for uh, an, a number of years. So it's not like all of a sudden, you know, Donald Trump becomes president and North Korea decides, yeah, we're just going to launch a whole heap of missiles. No, no, but 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 the world never really um, needed to take note because, you know, they weren't threatening U.S. territories before. There was only the usual, you know, we'll threaten South Korea, we'll threaten Japan, uh, you know, there wasn't this, you know, let's hit America, let's hit America, let's hit America sort of, um, you know, sort of sort of bullying in, in, in effect. Um, so, no, there's definitely there's definitely play on both sides. Um, but, you know, you, you didn't really see Obama or Bush address the issue. Um, they were they were more concerned about uh, other issues, especially in the Middle East. Um, and especially domestic issues like Obamacare and stuff. But, um, no, I, I just think I think that Trump is ramping it up and he's ramping it up on purpose because he wants to sort out the, the problem. Um, I don't think that that's, a, that's an unfair statement. Um, I think he's talking to the generals. I think he's trying to get his way, trying to push the generals to do their job. Um, yeah, no, I don't think it's an unfair assessment, but... We haven't really seen this sort of aggressiveness from Korea before, specifically towards the United States, definitely towards Asia in general, especially towards Japan and South Korea, but not specifically towards the United States to this sort of extent, you know. Uh, would you also say uh, Kim Jong Un is is definitely more uh, uh, unpredictable and? Uh, uh, the word would also also be um, you know more uh, outrageous than his father or grandfather, uh, given that you know he's um, you know executed his uh, uncle. Uh, there there seems to be you know a lot more uh, strange behaviour than we have seen in the past. Well, I think I think you're getting into um, I think you're getting into the idea that he's a, he thinks of himself more as a god. Uh, than Kim Il Sung. So Kim Il Sung actually had to fight to found the re regime. He had to fight to found the dynasty. And and when you're that, you usually come from the people, and you usually come from a a position where you respect the doctrines. 
um, Kim Jong Il, uh, King Jong Un, uh, he um, he was you know the son of, so he 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 would have had a transitional uh, phase uh, between his father and him, um, you know, and seen and seen some tough things. Whereas Kim Jong Un, um, it feels like he's just been born into a palace and he just feels like a god in a way. I think he he's having a very good life at the moment. He's having a, a, a quite a quote unquote fun life playing God and um, and uh, you know k- killing your uncle and murdering your uncle uh, for political gain is a is a is a ruthless tactic nonetheless. But it's something uh, a, the mind of someone who who ha- ha- has a very uh, a bloated sense of self would do. Um, and I don't think this is actually uh, this human psychology comes into this. I think, I think he may be a little more reckless, but he also enjoys his life. He also likes his life, and he's trying to balance, uh, you know, he's trying to balance North Korea's geographic constraints with you know tactics that are aggressive enough to get concessions from 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 the exterior, from the outside world, um, you know. So I think I think that Kim Jong Un, yeah, maybe he's a little, uh, he, he's definitely um, a little irrational, a little aggressive, but at the same time he's very well educated from uh, Switzerland, and he he obviously knows the game. Um, yeah, he, uh, I don't know, yeah, he, he could, there, there's multiple ways of looking at North Korea. You know, is he a madman, a bad, bad man, a good man, a, a, a cautious or strategic? Uh, a strategic thinker. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but from what I calculate and what I can see, he's playing. Um, he's a he's a godlike. Uh, he has a godlike. Uh, he thinks of himself as a god, and this is why he looks irrational to the outside world. But to himself, I think, I think he thinks he's doing a some very big strategic play. Um, and it, it, there's there's a yeah there's arguments in both of those. And we've talked about already that uh, China sees North Korea as a uh, strategic uh, state, as a buffer between them and the United States. But why are they willing to you know basically see twenty three million people you know impoverished you know starving you know just for some you know geopolitical uh, tactics? I mean you know why. Well, what what are they so afra- afraid of that? You know, because South Korea at the moment, I mean, it's still an independent sovereign state. It, it's you know one of the richest countries in the world. Certainly not a, a U.S. puppet. So why why this you know paranoia about uh, the U.S. you know coming up to their border? Well, I I, I think for China it's a very logical um, uh, uh, fear, very rational fear to have the, U- the United States right on your border. Um, Historically, it's never been, um, you know, the, the United States will then have a foothold into Asia, into the into mainland Asia, which it doesn't have at the moment. Um, you know, Russia only goes down as far as Vladivostok, uh, which, again, they just took from the uh, the Opium Wars. Um, you know, South Korea, although it's a uh, determined ally, it, it's an ally that could flip. It's an ally that could... Um, become independent, become sovereign, do its own thing, uh, have strife with uh, Japan, for example. Uh, we, we don't know. Um, at the moment, it, it all seems rosy, but we don't know what South Korea could do in the future. Um, and so, you know, having a U.S. territory um, with U.S. laws and uh, and things on in Asia would actually uh, be a huge uh, annoyance for China forever, forever more. Um is just it's uh, it, um, I, China doesn't feel any responsibility for North Korean people. Um, it's a homogenous people. It's not Chinese people. Uh, they don't feel any sort of why should they care what happens to North Korean people within North Korea? What they care about is North Korea buffering against you know South Korea and Japan and the United States, uh, for, you know especially onto the mainland of Manchuria. Um, because if you look historically, where have all the invasions been? Well, they've always been through North Korea uh, to Manchuria and then sweep down through Beijing and then down, right? So, um, 
you know, having this wall of people, or the, this wall, this 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 irrational state on their border, has been up until now a good deterrent. Uh, um, again, they don't feel any obligation to those people, and that's why they don't want a war at the moment. Because if those people flood back into China, then all of a sudden they have to take care of them, or or whatever. Um, whatever China decides to do with those people. But one would assume that they would take care of them, but they don't want to. They don't have any obligations. So for now, it's just like a huge playpen um, that it could just, hold, you know, bottle these people up into and, and use them as that buffer. Um, China doesn't feel any obligation to these people, only as strategic assets. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.